Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here, and it's Tuesday, August 20th, and we have another fun show today. We're just going to be drawing like we've been doing. We're going to be drawing some fun stuff. Uh, these have been really popular. Uh, a lot of people have really been responding to these little ink drawings I've been doing. Uh, this is number 30 right here that I'm going to be doing uh, today. And so we'll have probably two or three that we'll do today. Probably two. Two? Yeah, probably two. That's a good time. That's about two hours worth. So, um, but yeah, we're just going to continue with our little ink drying, drawings in the style of Heinrich Clay. You remember that guy I was talking about that I was a big fan of all through school? And uh, he's really, his work has really influenced me a lot. H-E-I-N-R-I-C-H-K-L-E-Y, Clay. Heinrich Clay. Look him up. He's really good. Uh, the ink drawings have just are, are just incredible, and you can get a lot out of them. Uh, so I really recommend looking up his work. And so uh, the other things I want to mention today are some of the things we've been talking about in the past. I'm working, you know, these drawings, are, I'm, uh, I'm getting them ready for um, the big light box event out in Los Angeles in Pasadena. Um, so, Dustin, that's the cue for you to pull up the light box event. Yes. Yeah, there you go. There you go. So we've got the light box event coming up. Uh, it's going to be September 6th through the 8th. And uh, I'm going to be out there the whole time. I'm going to be doing a lot of talks and demonstrations. I've got four that I'm doing for the Lightbox event. Plus, I'm going to be going over to Wacom and doing some stuff with them. And also over to Proko, Stan Prokopenko's Duke booth. I'm going to be doing some demos over there with him. So we've got a lot that we're going to have going on. And if I have the time, I want to do a little meetup at the LA Zoo and do some animal drawing. So hopefully we'll have time for that. I'm not quite sure yet. Uh, but it'll be a lot, a lot of fun. Uh, we're in booth 203. So if you come over to 203 uh, in Pasadena, September 6th through the 8th, you will find us. And all these drawings are going to be for sale along with other prints, uh, memberships, all kinds of stuff. So we would love to see you there. Um, also, I want to remind you that we still have a back to school sale happening. It's 25% off everything on the site. And if you're a student or a teacher, you can get up to 50% off of streaming and our memberships. So that's really huge. So that's going on through September 1st. So um, if you want to save for school, and we've got a lot of great stuff that's going to help you in art school, if that's where you're headed, uh, go check out our site and check out the sale because it's really going to help you. And also I want to mention our, uh, um, our Procreate, not Procreate, our Patreon. Uh, Patreon, thank you. you Man, go. too many P words. You okay? Yeah. Uh, I want to mention our Patreon account. Um, we're slowly growing and it really helps. Like I said, if you want to come on over for very low, you know, for a dollar, you can get like four images a month. For uh, for five bucks a month, you can get my entire uh, Photoshop file for each image. Uh, and, you know, see how I've layered them. And, and really, it's a, it's a lot of good lessons just in the ability to break apart a Photoshop file. And then if you do the $10 a month um, donation, then we are going to start doing monthly uh, um, live streams for you guys. And right now the number is pretty low, so I think we can do some portfolio reviews. And I think that'll be kind of exciting. Uh, so that's it. And then the last thing, the biggest thing I want to mention is our live stream character design course. Uh, we're going to be doing a one day live stream course September 28th and that's going to be starting at 11 a.m. our time Eastern Standard Time okay so that puts you know, if you're in England I guess that makes you about uh, I think it's uh, plus five I think for England so uh, it would be uh, four o'clock and uh, in the afternoon for you guys and it's gonna be six hours so um, you know, we've tried. We're trying to put it at a time that the people, you know, in time zones west of us and east of us, it kind of fits pretty good. So, uh, and for those of you that are in Asia, I know that's a tough. That's a tough time to uh, to start. Um, it would be going all night for you guys. We're gonna uh, we're gonna do another uh, stream for you guys uh, with a time that's a bit more friendly. So, hopefully, we'll we'll get that. Uh, depending on how this goes and when we get it done, and if the you know not too many bumps then we'll we'll get it all worked out so that's september 28th it's going to be character design i'm basically covering everything that i cover in my character design course 
but I'm going to be doing a lot of stuff live uh, and brand new. So um, it's kind of reiterating everything that's in that course. But like I said, I'll be there for questions and I'll be doing it live. So um, even if you have the course, I think it might be something that you'd be interested in. And, uh, and I'd love to see you there. And like I said, uh, we're going to keep it down to a low enough number. I think 300 or less so that you know, the lump, so the numbers are limited. Uh, everyone can ask questions as we do this throughout the six hour period. The way we're going to break it up is we're going to go for two hours and 45 minutes then take a 30 minute break and then another two hours and, th and 45 minutes and then we'll be done. So it's a little over five hours worth of content and uh, it's going to be great. So go over to CreatureArtTeacher.com and uh, check it out. I think you'll really enjoy it. So that's it. So as usual, we got Dustin here with me. And uh, he's going to be answer, uh, fielding questions for me. We've got duh, uh, Nick. Duh. 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 <laughs> Nick in Sarasota, Florida. He's about 160 miles away from us right now. And he's going to be doing questions as well. And I've got one coming up right here on my computer screen from Nick. It says, YouTube question. Do you think anatomy studies should be included in portfolio for art school? Um, it depends on... Uh, it, it shouldn't be too heavy on that. What you really want to be able to show is that you can draw uh, human anatomy, um, at least in my opinion, but what's more important is that you can draw human anatomy doing something, telling a story, you know, posing out a character that, that says something. That's what's more important. That's why we always recommend going to uh, the park or going to a grocery store or going to the mall or going, you know, and drawing people doing things so that you start to see that posing can illustrate a story. So that's the most important thing. It's okay to have some anatomical studies in there, but what's more important are those anatomical studies being used to tell stories through posing of your characters. Okay? Why don't we jump over to the down shooter? Actually, I got to I got to hydrate. Stay hydrated, my friends. Ah. Uh, yes. All right, so I've got this, um, I drew this ahead of time, and I've got this uh, elephant ice skating, skating backwards, having a great time. I decided to give him big tusks. Uh, will the live workshop be uh, recorded for those who paid? What's that? Uh, will the live workshop uh, be recorded for those who paid? Oh, uh, yeah, we're working that out. Uh, actually, if you heard that, Nick... Uh, you might have a better answer for me. Is the workshop going to be recorded for people that paid? Um, I think we will be. And also, i got to make a a, a, um, a correction on the back-to-school sale. Actually, the 25% part of it is actually over. Oh, no. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's teachers and students can still get 50% off of the membership until September 1st. So that's it. Teachers and students can get 50% off until September 1st. So, I'm drawing, baby. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. All right, buddy. Hit me with a question. And so, I'm using... What am I using? Well, I'm using a tool. T-U-L. Pen. Um, I picked up about nine of them for... Or 12 of them. Like nine bucks. Cheap, man. Nine bucks, really? Yeah, and I've been, I've only gone through one pen. I'm, well, this is my second pen. But look at this. I've done 30 drawings. I mean, I've got a pile. Let me see here. I've got a pile of drawings that we've done in the last week and a half. I mean, there's a lot in here. So that's a lot of, that's a lot of ink, baby. Baby. Oh, burger. You'll sell those ink drawings on the ne next cons, right? The next convention? The what? The next cons, like... Um, yeah, no, I'm, that's, I'm making these... I'm doing these drawings specifically to sell at... At, uh, at the Lightbox. At the Lightbox event. Um, are these going to be sold uh, anywhere else? Like if we don't sell sell them all out at the Lightbox? If we don't sell out at Lightbox, then we'll put them up for sale uh, on our website. Or I might do something here uh, during a live stream or on YouTube. 
Okay, uh, but they okay. will be for yeah, they'll be available afterwards if they don't sell. Gotcha. But from our li our last event that we did, we sold out of everything. And so that's why I'm working here because we expect to I'm trying to get enough that um you know, if everyone can get a drawing if they want one. Gotcha. Um Hey, Aaron, I'm going on vacation Hi. overseas in a few months. What do you recommend on for travel art supplies? Um, well, bring a simple sketchbook like this. You know, this this is what I carry with me everywhere I go. Is the, the Strathmore toned gray. And this, if you want to paint, bring a small watercolor set. And... Um, uh, and paper and I, I usually bring a small block for paper but then also I'm going to give these guys a little plug go, go to the uh, studio the other cam yep. yeah this one so this is my arty um, this is an art bag uh, if you go to lilorosh.com l-i-l-o-r-o-s-h dot com these are custom art bags and I carry this everywhere I go when I go on my uh, overseas trips and uh, you can see it opens up. The Velcro is great. And I keep all my pens and pencils and paint brushes and everything else right there. And then it opens up into a nice bag where you can put your sketch pads, you can put your paints. You can, you know, I've got my, I've got some other paint brushes in here, uh, right there. Um, and I keep my, and there's, you know, a flap in there so you can keep things separate. I've got uh, all kinds of stuff. Another zipper in the back which with another big pocket inside I keep more pencils and pens in there so this is a great bag it's um, and they're um, completely customizable pockets on the sides um, I once I got this I never went back I've actually got another one you can see up on my up hanging up on my shelf because I, I keep different bags for different mediums I love these bags it's L I L O R O S H that's lilorosh.com and uh, the bags are absolutely beautiful you can you can choose from different uh, materials um, those are denim they also make a, a waterproof one uh, they're awesome so that that to me is indispensable because it's small it's like a, it's the size of a pocketbook and uh, and you can stuff everything in it and you're good to go so that's my big recommendation there uh, Nick says, if uh, if you purchased a signed and numbered World Lion Day print, those went out in today's mail, and the tracking info has been sent to you. So, if you guys bought um, a World Lion Day print, they have been sent out, and you look in your email because tr there's tracking information. Make sure that that's being painted. I think this um, uh, next question is kind of similar to that of uh, if the uh, YouTube live uh, master course is going to be recorded um, well will it be available to keep as a download after the event yes so that's what we're trying to find out I'm not quite sure yet have you used a uh, fountain pens I have um, I don't have any right now though My 11-year-old sister is watching for the first time with me. Hey, sis. And, she, and she's truly sister. amazed. I love how art never fails to inspire people. <laughs> That's great. You're watching this with your sister. 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 That's how Dustin talks to his sister. They hey, sister. Hey, sister. Joe goes, hey, brother. <laughs> so I've already done the sketch, so I'm just kind of drawing in over the sketch right now. Maybe I can zoom in a little tighter. There we go. Hey, elephant. <laughs> Elefante. Elefante. Uh, do you use any anything when drawing standing up or tips for ske sketching while standing? 
No, I don't sketch. Well, I have back problems, so I don't sketch and stand very often. If I go out in the uh, and, and I paint at an easel, I have to take a few breaks here and there and sit. Because uh, when I was a kid, I actually fell out of a tree because I was climbing trees all the time, and I broke my back, and it didn't heal right, and so now I've got all kinds of back problems. Plus, I'm fat. <laughs> Being fat doesn't help. So yeah, well, when you are sketching and standing, it was you. It was mainly at like the zoos and at the zoos you would yeah. rest them on the rails and all that. Yeah. There we go. And you know, a lot of people ask about you know doing these things and drawing animals out of my head and all that. These are all drawn out of my head, but I've taken a lot of time to study the anatomy of these animals. And so if you if you spend the time, put your homework in. You know, you can do this kind of thing. Like I said, I've looked a lot at Heinrich Clay and how, you know, his his ink techniques. Now, he was using a crow quill pen, which is, you know, the pen that you dip, like a fountain pen kind of thing. Um, but uh, that's why I like these pens so much, because they kind of have that feel, that look, I should say. Um, but there's a lot more control and not going to spill everywhere. Well, I haven't gotten a oh. single, I'm sorry, I haven't gotten a single um, ink blotch yet. Which is good. Sorry, Dustin, go ahead. Oh, no worries. Uh, what animated film do you like so far this year or looking forward to seeing? You know, I haven't seen Toy Story 4 yet. Me either. So I'm excited to see that. What else is there? Uh, what have I missed? That's worth seeing. That's worth seeing. Yeah, because I, I don't know. I don't know what's out there. I have no idea. I either. haven't really kept up this year, to, to, to be honest. Me either. What's Disney come out with this year? Have they come out with Isn't anything? Toy Story 4 Disney? That's Pixar. Oh, Pixar. I mean, it's Disney technically, but... Yeah. Um... Yeah. Well, there's the Lion King, but that's considered live action. <laughs> but which it's not. Which is not. So there's that. And um, is it Wreck It Ralph? Was that this year? I think it was this year. Yeah, Wreck It Ralph breaks the internet. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was earlier this year. Or was that last year? I, don't I can't know. figure that out. Oh, Frozen 2 is coming this year. Oh, it is, oh, that's probably for November then, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I'll just uh, mention that. Oh, Missing Link. Oh, yeah, Missing Link is awesome. I saw that. You did see that? Yeah. I loved it, actually. And so I recommend that acupuncture is great for lower back problems. Yeah, this is this is more than an acupuncture issue. The vertebrae are completely crushed, and, uh, and my fatness is putting weight on that cr crushed pile of bone. If I lose the weight, then uh, it'll take that pressure off. So I gotta, I gotta take the sandwich out of my mouth, basically. <laughs> Get up from my desk a little bit more often. YouTube comment from Ah, uh, or your YouTube question. Hi, Aaron. I'm loving the perspective course. Is there any chance a course on perspective while figure drawing will be coming out soon? Um, I don't know that I have enough material that I could talk about. I mean, maybe I'll do a video on that because I don't know that there's enough information on figurative perspective. I think there's a couple of concepts to think about that I could probably get into a YouTube video, or maybe we do a live stream. You know that that way. Oh, Wreck It Ralph uh, Breaks the Internet was last year's November. Oh, it was? Oh, That's gotcha. Was. Um, kinda out of the context question, since you're not working on your computer right now, uh, have you animated with other programs than TV Paint like Flash, Toon Boom, or Photoshop? And are there any programs, maybe even freeware, that you can recommend for a beginner? 
You know, I, I, the only one I've ever used is TV Paint. And I really recommend TV Paint. I've tried to do Photoshop and it was completely confusing and doesn't play back. If you want, if you want to animate, then get the right tools to animate with. And so, you know, for, for me, it's either Toon Boom or TV Paint. And I know there's other ones out there, but to me, those are, you know, they, they really are the best in the industry, I think, that for, for available. And, um, and I really love TV Paint as a 2D animator. I think it's much more uh, uh, friendly for me. And like I said, it's, it's the only one that I really used. Isn't Klaus coming out soon as well? Klaus is coming out. I know the art of Klaus is coming out. The book is coming out in November, so I'm wow. thinking that the movie must be coming out at Christmas time as well. I'm assuming. That'd be interesting. Correct me if I'm wrong, anybody. Nick, do the thing. So notice too, I'm not really laboring. I'm trying to. I'm trying to keep my drawing nice and clear, but I don't really want to labor it. You know, that's part of the style is, you know, there's a looseness to this style. And I want to make sure that I keep that line alive. But at the same time, I don't want, I don't want any, uh, any inaccuracies in the anatomy or anything like that. So even though I'm staying loose-ish, I want to make sure that I'm accurate as well. Right, somebody wrote, "Well, time to eat better." Talking about you with your diet, and I, and for a second I read it up as, "Well, time to eat butter." <laughs> <laughs> okay, How does that work? I'll eat some <laughs> butter. Mm, butter. How often do you use action lines, and do you ever worry? Uh, that you're repeating a pose you've already done. I catch myself doing very similar poses sometimes and don't realize it until I'm further in on it. Yeah, I'm always... I'm, I'm, well, first of all, I don't think about a pose that I've already done. I don't have like a stock set of poses. So I just make sure that the pose I'm making is correct for the need. And sometimes uh, if it's similar to something else, you know, I'll try to push it. But I don't really have that problem. I'm trying to here. I'm just trying to get that shadow going across uh, from the tusks going across the arm there, and the, you know I'm trying hard to make sure that the that the um, I've got light over dark, dark over light because this is a pretty complex silhouette, and things are overlapping, and uh, so I want to make sure that it's all clear. Is there a student discount for TV paint, or how much does it cost? There is a student discount. Uh, Nick, tell me how much the, uh, how I can't remember, uh, Nick has it. And actually, if you get a membership on our website, you can get even more of a discount. And the discount basically covers the cost of our membership. So it's pretty good. Do you know how much um, TV paint is without any of the discounts? No, that's what I'm saying. Nick, Nick oh. can come up with it. I'm not. I can't remember what it is, but the student, I, you know, I recommend getting the the standard, the standard uh, TV paint. You don't have to get the professional version, and um, and and with the student discount, I think it's for what you get. I think it's very affordable. Nick, and it's only a one-time fee. You're, you're not. You don't have to license it like TV, like uh, Toon Boom. Uh, YouTube comment from Austin. Dustin, do your best, Jagger. Uh. <laughs> put the put the camera on you. See, Austin and Dustin have this thing where they have to do their they have to do <laughs> they have to do Mick Jagger all the time. You're right. You're right. Point the fingers. Point the fingers. And you, Austin. <laughs> Question: Any chances on tutorials for drawing hyenas and African wild dogs? Yes, we will be doing more African uh, animals. I might do a, a, a full course just on African animals. So, you know, other than the, you know, because I've already got the big cats. Maybe I, I have to, i got to find the right title, but um, yes, we, the, the short answer is yes.
Does anyone have the link to buy this pen? For Tool. Uh, just look it up. Just look it up. T T U L. There it is. Oh, let me come down here. T T U L. Uh, here. Bing, 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 gel. Bing, 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 bing. Tool gel pens, and they're waterproof, so you can paint over them. They're waterproof. Yep. Oh my. Uh, comment, YouTube comment. You should draw the Beatles as Beatles. That would be so funny. <laughs> I want to hold your claw. That was bad. What is the least favorite thing or animal uh, breed to draw? I don't have a least favorite animal thing. Uh, uh, doorknob. <laughs> doorknob is not an animal. <laughs> What's well, a, a thing, thing or animal? It's a thing. Hands. Hands are things. Hands are... I, I really struggle with hands. I've always struggled with hands. It's a weird thing. It's coming along. He's skating along and singing a song. <laughs> Any ideas on the next animation course? Um, I've been thinking about getting that one where I was uh, animating to music, doing that again, getting that right into a course. Um... I think that could be a lot of fun. And uh, I've got a couple other ones, but I'm not quite sure ready to... Uh, I'm not ready to announce it yet, because I'm not not quite sure yet. Um, do the tool pens dry quickly? Yes. So, like, you can see that tail. I just laid it down. Boop. No smear. Dusty, can you do an impression of Jeremy Irons as Scar? Uh, no. <laughs> Life's not fair. Life's not fair, is it? That's the best I can do. Yeah, that's not Jeremy Irons. No, but it's a good. It's a good character. He's a very good character. Well, I'm glad but. you think so highly of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Nick says the student version of TV Paint Standard is approximately two hundred ninety-five dollars and seventy-five cents U.S. For our members, it's a hundred and ninety-five dollars. So you're getting a hundred dollars off the cost if you become a member on our on our uh, site. That's a pretty big uh, savings, if you ask me. Ask uh, you. Yeah. Are the tail hairs, hairs, <laughs> are tail hairs really divided like that? I didn't know. Yes, actually, on a on a uh, let me show you on this on an elephant, the tail hairs are not only divided like that, and they're very wiry. Here's the tail; it comes down and gets thick here at the end. In one side of the tail, there's just a few hairs, like this. The other side of the tail, there's a whole bunch. So it's like that. That's how an elephant tail looks. And these hairs, right here, are really, really wiry. I've actually got a bracelet somewhere that I've got from a, a Maasai guy. Um, I got a bracelet made out of these hairs all woven, but they're thick. They're like wire. I wonder why their tails are like that. I don't know. Question. Do you prefer drawing human-like animals or realistic animals? You know what? I go back and forth. I, I, uh, I love doing stuff like this where, you know, 
I'm I'm telling a story and they're getting a little anthropomorphic. They're, it's kind of fun, but I really love you know portraying them in a realistic light as well. I don't know. I go back and forth. I really do. The drawing with the person taking a nap on the elephant is beautiful. Will you incorporate more humans into the series? Uh, yeah, because I there is also this one here. There's one that I I, I, I drew from uh, some reference. Let me pull out on this. I was in uh, I was in Thailand uh, a while about seven years ago. I was I was in Thailand and I went to an elephant festival, and they did a reenactment. Um, of some battles. This is in Surin, Thailand. It's up near Laos. And, uh, and so this was a drawing that I did from some of the reference that we shot while we were there. It was really, really cool. So I'm going to be doing some more drawings from that because the elephants were all adorned and they had armor on and all kinds of stuff. And then the other drawing that the, the person was just talking about is this one right here. This was just a made up one. It's meant to be a Maasai on the back of a African elephant and they're taking a snooze, relaxing. Sorry, my camera's moving around. So yeah, I'll be doing more stuff like this. So these are the last few. This is the three little wolves instead of the three little pigs. Oh. <laughs> and uh, this was just a horse. Just wanted to draw, add some kind of fun horse reference. This is uh, lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. <laughs> uh, these are all ones that I've done in the last few days that you guys haven't seen. This is a croc at a fat farm. You know, talking to the hippopotamus about how she's going to lose weight. And this is a elephant doing up an ele a lion's mane. Blow drying it with his trunk. Just trying to come up with fun little situations. And just a crocodile in the rain. And then this was the, uh, you guys saw this. this I, I did this on their last live stream. So these are some of the drawings that I've done since then. So these were a lot of fun. I must, must say. I must say. There we go. Uh, is this a ballpoint black pen? Uh, no, it's not. It's a gel pen. Well, I, I don't know if it's ballpoint. It's like a steel point. I'm not sure if it's ballpoint or not. Steel point. Big stack here. Lots of drawings. All right. Let me zoom back in so you can see. Question. What do you think with age improvements or uh, what do you think with age improvements or worsens when drawing? I'm 55 years old and my pulse is no longer the one I had. <laughs> I think it improves. Obviously, if you're if you're if you're working diligently every day, then I think it changes. I look at things that I did in my 20s that are probably better then than I can do now on certain things. Uh, in drawing and, and painting. I, I look back and I go, man, how did I do that? Um, but I had a certain subject matter, I just I'd let it go. And so it's like a muscle, it gets weak over time. And so, you know, I gotta, you gotta make sure that you keep yourself well-rounded as an artist as you age, I think. But then I think also that I've, I see the world differently and I've matured in that way. So it's a, yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. You got anything, Dustin? Not yet. Uh, do you like Indian rhinos in San Diego? Uh, Indian rhinos. I like Indian rhinos. I don't know about Indian rhinos in San Diego. I think it's at the uh, San Diego Zoo. Oh. Well, I've actually tracked uh, real Indian rhinos in Nepal. Actually. I've seen a post where there was a cat version of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. The Seven Dwarfs were cats, and, the, and Snow White was a tiger. <laughs> That's funny. I'm 
just trying to get some nice texture in the skin. What if you go back to one of your oldest uh, drawings you have and redraw it? Well, that's the problem. Well, I don't have any oldest drawings. Um, well, I mean, I've got drawings that go back 20 or 30 years, but to me, that's not that far back. I don't have, because um, I'm, you know, those are a lot, a lot of work drawings and stuff like that. But um, all my drawings that I did as a kid when I was young um, burned up in a fire. We had a forest fire. Uh, a forest fire came through where we lived and it burned our house down and I lost all my art from when I was a kid. Yet. I want to get the feel of those scapulas coming back. The shoulder blades. The scapula. The scapula. The scapula. Bippity boopity boop. 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 A bippity. A boppity. A boo. So I want to push this back and get it underneath him. So I'm putting, putting that foot in shadow, pushing it back. Push it. Where are you at, Mama? I'm in the bushes. I'm in the bushes. Now where are you at, Papa? He's in the bushes. What do you think of the DreamWorks uh, Spirit Stallion of the Samaran? If you're talking about the movie, I love the movie. I haven't seen the... Isn't there a series right now? I think there's a series. And I haven't seen the series. Yeah, I know the movie Spirit, and I've heard of the series, but I've never really watched it uh, much. In fact, I've only seen like the commercials for it. So there is a series. There is a series. Yeah. I yeah, I haven't seen it. it. Um, any tips on artists dealing with the fears of imposter syndrome? What is that? Oh, imposter syndrome. Like you're faking it? Like you're not really... Just deal with it. Get over it. <laughs> you're not an imposter. We all feel like we can't draw and we're faking it at some point. But you get over it. What are your thoughts on a series called uh, Camp Cretaceous by DreamWorks? I don't know anything about it. Me either. What is that? I, Sounds I dinosaur-y. I can give you that. There, that gets that ear to sit back there a little bit. Justin on YouTube says, Hi Aaron, I'm excited I get to watch your stream live today. I'm normally wa teaching when you're on. I also signed up for your character design masterclass next month. It's a good day. Thank you very much, Justin. I'm glad you have minds to mold. That you're here with us today. That's awesome. Thanks, man. Question. Can you offer a beginner some advice on how to improve on bird drawings, particularly regarding anatomy? The raising and lowering of feathers changes body contours so much. It does. And really the best way to get better at that stuff is through observation. So, you know, there's a lot of bird uh, rehabilitation centers. I don't know if you're in the United States or uh, somewhere overseas. I know in, in Britain there's a lot of bird rehabilitation centers, falconries, places that you can go. And then here in the States there's a lot of uh, rehabilitation centers as well. So. Uh, I would recommend getting into those and just uh, and do some studies because uh, the best way to, to understand that stuff is to see it in from life 
and draw it, you know. Uh, Nick says it would be cool to do your first digital e image over again. The lion yawning. Oh, yeah. That's what Nick was just... I've got my first very my very first digital painting I ever did. I've actually got that somewhere. And doing that over again would be kind of fun. So it was a yawning lion that I did from uh, some reference that I shot when I went to Africa in 1998. Wow. See those spots? I just spit. Oh, nice. <laughs> I just spit on my drawings. <laughs> So I That's got, just crazy. It's got my DNA. This is pickable. All right, so gotta get in here. In here, here, here. What's the difference between this technique versus the one you do with markers? Uh, this is completely different. This is uh, markers. You can get a big swath of an area, whereas this requires a lot of cross hatching. It's strictly black and white markers. You can get a lot of subtlety. Hey, Aaron. I'm so happy that I got a spot in your character design online workshop. Really looking forward to it. Uh, will it be available as a stream after the event? That's what we're trying to figure out. So, Nick, if you could... Um, are we going to be doing that? Are we going to be able to offer this as a stream after the event? Or, or is it strictly only for... Fe I think it's just going to be folks that are there... So obviously you said you're going to be there. I think we're going to offer it for folks that are, that are there. It's not going to be for sale after the fact. Uh, but Nick is going to be able to elaborate. I was watching some of your old live streams and you mentioned that you were lost at sea for three days as a kid? Yeah. Please do tell. <laughs> we went out to do some fishing. I was about to, I was going to, my brother and I were going to go up to Vermont for the summer, and so our stepfather was taking us out for a day of fishing before we went, and um, we, uh, we went out about 60 miles, and um, uh, when it came time to go back in to shore, our compass uh, was pointing in the wrong direction. And uh, we went south instead of going back east towards the Florida coast. We were in the Gulf of Mexico. And so we went towards Cuba instead. And, um, and it just turned into a, you know, we went the wrong direction. And then, just, you know, one thing led to another. And then we realized we weren't getting any closer. And so you know, by the end of the first night, we didn't know where we were. And it was already dark. And, uh, and we were still out in the ocean beyond where we could see any land so we decided just to anchor and we would try to find we would chase the sunrise which rises in the east and that should bring us towards land and so we did that the next morning we were already late coming home we were supposed to be home the day before so people were starting to freak out and the coast guard was out looking for us and, but we had gone south or in a direction other than where they thought we were so that didn't help but um uh, so then we, the sun came up and we went towards the sun and we saw land within about 10 minutes but we were still about 25 miles out and uh, we ran out of gas so then it became a, a you know us trying to get to shore without gas and it's just a, it's a huge adventure I had to swim for miles and miles with a, with a rope guiding the boat and um, then a whole bunch of sharks came in and came under me and I had to get out of the water but then we caught sharks for food and uh, it was just one thing after another so uh, it's a long long story it was a big adventure my brother ended up writing a script about it the person was asking about the uh, spirit I'm, I'm talking about the spirit movie I, I mean the James Baxter's horse animation in it oh yeah it was great James Baxter's horse animation is flawless. You have any cool stories of Richard Williams? You know what? Sadly, I don't. Richard Williams, I really wanted to meet. I'd never gotten to meet him. And uh, we were hoping to get to Annecy and meet him next year. And now, unfortunately, it's not going to happen. 
So for those of you that don't know, Richard Williams, a creator of Roger Rabbit and so many other wonderful films like The Thief and the Cobbler and uh, oh, just so many, so many great, great pieces of animation. Uh, he passed away last Friday. He was a big, uh, I was a, you know, he was an idol of mine, and uh, and um, I was lucky enough to work with his son, Alex Williams, in Florida. Uh, another great, really nice guy. One of the things that was so wonderful about Dick Williams that I heard was just how incredibly kind he was and and how uh, he was always curious and always a student, which is something that I, I just I always love that when I hear that about people that are so established in what they do, but and yet they're still you know in awe of everything and wanting to learn more. And that's how Richard Williams was. Or at least that's the way that I heard that he was, because I personally didn't know him, but I still found him very inspiring, and and uh, and his you know animator survival handbook, you know the book he wrote on animation, is a standard, you know that's standard fare out there for a lot of young animators learning how to how to animate. Nick says that the uh, the li the stream for our character design course will be available afterwards for the people that signed up. So there you go. So you will be able to he keep that. Oh, <laughs> Nick says I should tell the story about the time I crashed my airplane. I used <laughs> to have a powered parachute, uh, and I crashed that too. So I've survived a plane crash. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> I survived being lost at sea, and I survived a plane crash. I used to have an ultralight airplane that I would fly, and I got stuck in a storm with my wife at the time, Karen, Dustin's mother. Uh, she was in the back seat with me, and uh, we got stuck in the storm, and I couldn't control the plane because the, the, the winds were so bad, and I had to pick a, we were flying over a lake, and I had to pick a, a place in the marsh that we could just crash and hopefully survive, and so I did. We went in like a freaking dart. <laughs> just, I just remember that, oh, the water just exploding, and and uh, but everything was fine. I jumped out of the plane and pulled your mother out of the back seat, thinking that maybe she was injured, and I carried her to shore. And she said, "Aaron, Aaron, I'm fine. I'm fine. Just go go get the plane out of the mud." <laughs> so I spent the next hour trying to get the plane out of the mud. Since you directed Brother Bear, is there something you would have done differently if you uh, would work on the movie nowadays? Yeah, I think I'd, I'd work better on the dialogue. I'm not happy with the dialogue in that movie. There. So there's our little guy. Ice skating. You want to be tasteful with your white. You don't want to put too much in. And I'm really just putting it in areas that's going to help define form. Um, and you can see there um, how you know pretty loose I keep everything. So I just wanted to show you really quick. Just move that around. You know, I want it to be. It's drawing, so I want it to look like drawing. I want it to. I want you to see the line work and you know see it's made by hand and it's a fun uh, it's a fun medium pull out on that there we go there uh, which do you prefer and why fountain pens gel pens or ballpoint pens it really depends on what I'm working on I like the gel pens because the way they flow I like ballpoints because they're super easy and uh, and very portable. I was wondering, is a Lightbox Expo an industry only convention? No, anyone can go. You just got to pay a ticket. No, not at all. That's the point of it. You can go there and take classes, and yeah, it's pretty cool. Go check out the website. I think it's Lightbox.com, isn't it? I think so.
Another one bites the dust. That makes drawing number 30. Druby on YouTube says, if you keep doing these workshops enough, it'd be a great sales point to include the recorded workshop streams as an exclusive add-on purchase to your members. That's a pretty cool idea. Pretty cool. I like that idea. That's a pretty cool idea there, Peter. <laughs> Peter. Believe it or not. Ancient Gamer says, note to self, never never travel with Aaron Blaze. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm kind of bad luck. <laughs> kind of bad luck? Yeah, it's funny. Yeah. But, I survived all of them. Are you going to be adding a shadow to that? Nope. nope. No shadow. Because I don't want the line work to interfere with the silhouette. So uh, I'm just going to leave the shadow out. That's when it goes with no oh, shadow. Well, what is wrong with the uh, dialogue in Brother Bear? Uh, it's just a little stiff. I just think it's a little stiff. I could have written it better. And it's and it's not so much the dialogue all the time, because I think the dialogue is actually isn't horrible, but some of it's a little bit on the nose. Uh, but I wish I would have pushed for better performances. Um, I was a young director, and uh, I should have pushed for better performances from some of the uh, from the characters. And it's not the actor's fault, it's mine, because I would, you know... I should have directed in a better, you know, just a little bit more variation so that we had something more to choose from. But, um, but it's, it's kind of a nitpicky note. I think it's okay, but like I said, it could be better. Nick says, for no reason, your next stream should be you using a giant frilly feather fountain pen. <laughs> like I'm a founding father. <laughs> yes. Nice. I should do that. <laughs> okay, so the uh, the the URL for Lightbox is lightboxexpo.com. Lightboxexpo.com. Question: I notice as you are using your Jelly Roll pen that you are sometimes building up thick lines in some areas outside the edge uh, of the arm, top of the ear, but using a mix of scattered lines in other areas, base of the foot and shoulders. Very good observation. I do. I do that. Do you decide these lines intentionally, or do you tend to just feel it out as you go? No, I'm doing that intentionally. Usually, contour lines, the edge of a of a form, I'm using usually thicker lines, um, and it's usually the shadow area as well, the shadow side. Um, or if I'm wanting to build up a form, um, I'll, I'll start to thicken up a side. Uh, but I'm always thinking about light and dark as I'm drawing, and so. Usually those contour lines are going to end up being thick on one side, maybe a little lighter on the other, um, not, although not too light because of just the, the type of pen I'm using. And then uh, as my lines that I'm using to show form, the scratchy kind of contour lines, um, I'm sorry, the outside lines are, you know, it's the outside contour uh, of the silhouette, but then there's contour lines inside that are actually describing the shape, you know, the hatchy lines that are showing the roundness. Those I tend to go a little bit lighter. And then if I'm shading in an area completely, I'll go even lighter with those. It's just, um, you know, it's just my way of, of letting the line uh, dictate the form as well. All right, uh, we need another animal, Dustin. All right. Uh, someone whispered, Snow Leopard. Snow Leopard. I need, I need Snow Leopard reference. I can't, I don't, I'm not doing, uh, I don't know Snow Leopard's out of my head yet. And I don't have the reference. Reference. Uh, let's do. Uh, uh, we got to come up with something. Hippo. Let's do a hippo. Hippo. Yeah. Oh, you're pulling up a reference? Yeah. Or at least trying to find a good one. How about... Yeah, pull up. Yeah, just give me that one that was just there. Go back. Yeah, that's fine. Do a screen grab of that. Screen grab. Remember how to do that? Nope. <laughs> Here. Uh, Here. I'll show you. You, you take over. <laughs> so you go uh, Command Shift 4. Four. Yeah, and then it gives me the crosshairs. Uh huh. Yeah. Cut. Yeah, and then uh, it's going to be on the desktop. Go ahead and drag that over for me. Desktop. 
Oh, Nick asked, did you show your Roger Rabbit image? I did not. Can you hand that to me, Dustin? I've got my Roger Rabbit image over there. Oh, man. No, I don't have it over there. Where'd it go? There's so much confusion. <laughs> What's going on? What did I do with my Roger Rabbit image? I, I don't know. I wasn't here. Oh, shoot. Well, turn nugget. I don't have it right now. I don't know where I placed it. Nick, 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 Nick. Uh, Shoot, I had it over there. Huh. We're still on the down shooter? Yes, we are. Okay, so... Uh, there you go. Okay, we got to make that a little smaller. Yeah. We gotta, or make the... Uh, yeah, make that a little smaller. Here, want me to take the... Take the yeah. You have the mouse. You do it. We got to make this a little bit... Whoops. That's not it. What the heck? Made a hand? Well, make it smaller. <laughs> well, I'm getting annoyed now. There it is, right there. Yep. It's not. What? How did you open that? I I just double clicked it. Hang on. I mean. I think it might, might have... Uh, you drag that over. Alright, we're going to do a snow leopard, folks. So let me just start... Oh, that's what it was. I want to do something that's going to show off his tail. Maybe something that's not quite... So I want to do something really designy. Something that feels like a big nose. Is that too small? Nope, that's perfect. All right. I just yeah, need the spot pattern. Yeah, it turned out what happened was um, I I guess one of my when I was operating over here, I accidentally clicked on one of the um, options up top, which was like a square, and so I just deleted like a little square in the bottom right hand corner, so you see like a white square over there. What's cool about snow leopards is that they have this big forehead. They, which uh, most cats don't have, not in this way. Uh, Kristen Von Benson asks, uh, Aaron, were the pigs I emailed any help for inspiration? Yes, I'm trying to remember. Yes, 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 yes. They were wonderful. Want to come up with a something here? Uh, will you be doing a Veterans Day sale on uh, subscriptions? No, I'm subscription. not sure yet. Probably. Comment. You don't have enough bears yet. Well, I'll, I've got a, I've got seventy more drawings to go, so I will, I will have enough bears. So I, I just want. So I want to get this nice little. Very simple. Their ankle length, from their ankle to their toe, is really short. That helps with springing. And they can really spring. I want to have 
like these kind of a lot of times they'll kind of lay on their side and the foot will come underneath like so and when they get that tail right their tail is so long we get all that tail coming around how do you get better at writing more natural dialogue you really read other people's dialogue. Read, see how they do it. Tarantino's great at it. Listen to how people speak. Speak. And then, then the hard part is you have to mold that into advancing the story, but still make it natural sounding. That's where it gets hard. What is going on? I'm making these marks. You know what I think? You know what I got to do? I got to clean my hand. I'm getting, see my hand? Uh, I'm getting yeah. graphite smeared on here. That's no good. And uh, so I'll be right back. I'm gonna wash my hands. Okay. So uh, I I guess I'll take over for a minute. Hi. How's it going? Awkward! <laughs> so does anybody have any questions or anything of that sort? I'm just looking at, I'm looking at the comments over here, so. Yeah. Hello, Caitlin. How are you? <laughs> Hello, my mate, Mike, mate. How do you say that? Mate Bowser. Hi, Angela. I am doing good. How about you, Angela? Man, I'm pretty. <laughs> Man, I'm pretty. Favorite, favorite, favorite Cowboy Bebop character. I would say Spike. Spike Spiegel is my favorite. Uh, shows my drawings. I don't have any drawings. I do photography. Um. And you can check out my photography at Dustin underscore Blaze on Instagram. Uh, can you sing Thunder Imagine Dra Dragons with Funny Voice? Maybe later. And hey, we're he's back. back! We're back! I don't know how much longer I could handle it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to change this head. Not liking the head. You're not liking the head? Not liking it. Oh no. There, I want to get something that shows a little more of this curve right there. That feels good to me. So here, I don't want to have that, I want to see those paws. So I'm going to have them come around here. And the tail I'll have come around like this. Steve Hawthorne asks, Hello, I believe Aaron is hoping to take a few drawings to Lightbox in September. Any plans to do the same for CTN? Yes. Yes, yes, yes. There is plans to do that. Would you sketch some more farm animals? I love the pig you did with the three little <laughs> wolves. <laughs> yes, I will. So here, I want to get this head. For me, I want to make sure that I get a nice profile. I think I'm just going to keep it a simple, stylized. Also, will you be doing more forest animals and birds in the in this series? Yes, so I will actually. I don't know if I want just a profile. Profile seems kind of. Now that I've done it, it feels boring. See, I always I, you'll see the 
I'll work it and work it and work it until I get it to where I want it. What's your pick of the funniest moment on a Disney movie? Uh, I don't know. Um, there's got to be some great stuff with Robin Williams and the genie that oh, I, yeah. you know, you know, obviously there is, but I'm just saying. There's some, there's some stuff I, I, I really loved. Um, Evan Rude, I, uh, not Evan Rude. What was the, what was the Firefly's name from Princess and the Frog? Oh, um, oh, God, what was his name? Uh, I can't remember. Let me see if I can pull up that character's name. <laughs> it's, a, it's it's stupid. I don't know why I remember it so much, but it's a it's a little throwaway line where he's talking about the crocodile and how it almost killed him to death. Oh. <laughs> Your breath almost killed me to death. Man, it cracked me up. I couldn't stop okay, laughing. Little mother. Oh, I'm fine. Well, your breath, oh, near, near, kill me to death. <laughs> Not liking this characterization either. Got to get a smaller, smaller head. I want it to be a better stylized. I got this flow going around, this gesture. So I want this to come up. Oh, it's Ray. Oh, Ray, that's right. Yep. Ray the little lap bug. Dustin, what is your favorite animal? Oh, I would say... Either a lion or a bear. Like, I'm kind of on the same boat as Dad with that. <laughs> yeah, I would say bear, because they're just big, powerful... Uh, Beast and yet yeah, can be so cuddly. <laughs> as long as you don't threaten them. What kind of bear are you talking about, boy? Mm. Grizzly. There we go. Getting the stylization that I'm kind of liking. How about you make him looking down at a small dog or something with a goofy grin? Now I'm just going to go with a simple pose here. Dustin do Count Dooku. I wish I could. This is the best I could do. <laughs> there, there are certain ones I just can't. Certain people I just can't do because their voices are too deep and they're too specific. 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 There we go. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. Whoa! Easy, pal. So I'm trying oh. to get the... I want to get the nice form of, you know, the shoulders coming around, drawing through. The shoulder comes around out here on this side. You know, you think about the shoulder blade underneath, comes into the shoulder. Here's we got the elbow right here. Maybe I'm a little high on the elbow. Might drop that elbow down a bit. For your drawings, will you be having a booth at CTN? And how best to chase for a drawing? Yes, I am in, I'm going to be in booth 203. And just get to the booth. And not a chipmunk. Your impressions are awesome. Oh, thank you. Oh, I know I can do a chipmunk, but I just can't do Count Dooku. Too lonely. <laughs> it cracks me up every time. You're welcome. There we go. 
So I'm just shoring up the drawing right now here and there. Get a little bit, he's not putting a lot of weight on that foot, so I want to show the curve. Get that curve coming around. And I want to show some of that. The, uh, the cheekbone come back here. There. So it's not really a big character piece like we just did with the elephant skating. It's going to be more of a stylized, just kind of elegant, trying to do an elegant little snow leopard piece. We pull wider. So it's got a little bit of S shape to it. What I'm going to do is get this here. So I'll come right off that shoulder blade and do it that way. That's got more flow to it. There we go. Mr. Mullick asks, Aaron, do you work out? I used to work out. I used to be built like a brick house. <laughs> He's at, in a brick At one time. But uh, I haven't worked out in a long time. Um, but no. I long for the days that I was younger and couldn't gain any fat. Suggestion. I suggest you draw meerkats playing ring toss on a rhino's horn. Nick says I love that idea. Actually, I think that idea is brilliant, and I'm going to do that. Okay, I'm ready to start drawing. All right. Question. Are there any non-animation artists you look up? Andy Warhol, etc., and why? Uh, I'm not a big Andy Warhol fan, but yes, there are a lot of other artists that I really look up to. Um, John Singer Sargent, Joaquin Soroya, um, uh, 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 why am I drawing a blank? Because uh, uh, you can't get anything to fill it. Shishkin, Russian Shishkin. landscape painter. A lot of great guys. There's a lot. And I'm drawing a blank right now because I'm trying to think about this. They're all a bunch of great guys, believe it or not. Believe, believe it or not. not. So the first thing that I'm doing right now is just trying to get some of this contour. Let me draw in a little tighter. Dustin, pull up a um, reference of Snow Leopard uh, on the head detail a little bit for me. I can't remember how the spot pattern goes, and the, re the reference we have right now isn't really showing it to me. Okay. Yeah. You need like a profile of the no, head? No, just uh, like three quarter or front on. Three quarter or five five. That's a good one. There we go. Um, what was this? It was control, option, pan. Go oh, control. I'll show you. No. Control or command shift four. Command shift four. And Nick says, now you're just a double wide. <laughs> you're exactly right. I am just a double wide. Oh, gotta make 
make sure I'm drawing in the So I've got the, the body contours, so I'm not too worried about that. So I'm going to draw that in and wait for the wait for the spot reference to come in. Oh, that's better. How's that? That's You're going to move it as yeah, anywhere? Yeah, no, it's okay. I just put it right there for now. Yeah. All right. Do you work with Chris Sanders? I used to work with Chris Sanders. We worked at the Florida studio together. Chris was directing Lilo and Stitch when I was directing Brother Bear. Chris is an amazing artist. And one of the best story people out there. He's absolutely incredible. And his his drawing style is so super appealing. His uh, the way he draws women and animals and all of that's super super appealing. You know, Lilo is a real strong typical Chris Sanders design. Weird question, so bear with me. Um, is there any trilogy in cinema where you liked the third movie better than the first two? I've been <laughs> thinking about it myself and I can't think of any. The Alien, you know, the only thing that comes closer is some of the Alien movies, like Alien 2, Aliens, I thought was stronger than the first Alien. And then Alien 3 was kind of Man. Yeah. But I still like, but I still thought Alien Three was good. See there there aren't um it's not until the the really late ones that have come out lately, like Alien vs. Predator and crap like that. That I don't like. I mean if you kind of count the Star Wars prequels as their own trilogy, I would say I like the third one better than the first two on that one. Yeah. Yeah. Because I just liked all the action sequences in that. Yeah. So here I'm just very loosely laying in some of the shade. Can you move this one now so I can see the the other one? Let's get rid of it. Just get rid of it? Yeah. There we go. Just needed it for that moment. Yep. Okay. Just junk it. Just junk it. <laughs> alien stronger than alien? Heretic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I actually believe that I like aliens more than the first one. I mean, the first one. I love the first one. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. The first one is great. Just the second one. Hmm. I like yeah. the action in hmm. that one. Uh, I just like stuff with action in it. <laughs> hey, Christopher Nolan's Batman? Like the... But it Batman seems like the, like the Batman films were... It's almost like they were reinvented every time they... They bring out they bring, Batman. Bring, yeah. yeah. Now, honestly, I liked... The Dark Knight more than the other the other two. Dark Knight was the one with uh, Heath uh, Heath Ledger's Joker. Like that was my favorite of of the Batman stuff. Carl on YouTube says, "I just ordered my Cintiq Pro Twenty Four, and then Aaron starts using paper again." <laughs> I'll be going back. I promise. I promise. <laughs> what do you think about the sketchy animation style in the Aristic Cats and 101 Dalmatians? I love it. One of the things, one of the reasons I love that so much is that it's, it's embracing 
the medium. It's embracing the fact that it's hand drawn, and um, and you're not ashamed to let it. You know, this idea that these you know your your cleanup lines have to be rock solid and perfect. I think it it, it kind of defeats. I mean, it's it, it's a nice style, sure, but I think it defeats the the premise that I mean, this it's a hand drawn medium. Let it let it shake a little bit. Let it boil. I mean, that's. That's part of the beauty, I think, of, of the medium. I really love that. That was the middle of uh, Nolan's Batman, right? Uh, Dark Knight? Yeah, that was the second one. The third one what was was with Bane, and that was Bane. Um, oh. Dark Knight Rises? Yeah. Because the first one was Batman Begins, and then it was Dark Knight, and then Dark Knight Rises. Yeah. A so, little wider now. Dark Knight. Oh, India. Oh, yeah. Nick says Indiana Jones and the Last Crusade. That is, oh. a, that is a great third one. Yeah. Junior? We were just talking about that the other night when uh, Karen was pregnant with Dustin, <laughs> and he was b basically due. And uh, and every time the uh, the when the plane the oh shoot the biplane lets yeah. go of the zeppelin and comes down and he's shooting at him, you'd start kicking because <laughs> it was so loud. And she went into labor soon after that. Were we hit? More or less? <laughs> I'm sorry, son. They got us. <laughs> <laughs> you knew a good John Connery back then. I'm one with the rocks, the birds, and the the, oh, the rocks, the water, the the trees, and the birds in the sky. Oh, when he when he, when he scared out. all the birds up to yeah knock the plane out. Bravo Rocco on YouTube says War for the Planet of the Apes. Yep, that's another good one. That's, yeah. Absolutely. That was the last one that that uh, um, they released, right? Yeah, was it, that, uh, uh, was it the trilogy, right? Yeah. Man, I love that. This uh, The remakes, the, the, those trilogies. They did a great job oh with the detail of those apes. But it was super, super entertaining and so expressive and I've always loved that franchise anyway, ever since I was a little kid. I used to dress up at Halloween as as one of the apes. <laughs> Cornelius. I can picture you with the, with the ape mask. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Hold on, man. Hold on a minute. Wait, do you still have it or something? All right, we're going to take a little walk down memory lane here. Oh, God. Well, there, real quick, um, do you recommend sketchbooks? Um, uh, no, no, oh yeah, do you recommend sketchbooks with gray paper for everything, or mainly digital, assuming little color is used? What is it? Do you recommend sketchbooks with gray paper for everything, or mainly digital? Oh no, I, it's I, no, get, you can get white too. So I like gray paper just because I like to. Uh, you know, go back and forth between the black and the white. So there's little me back in 1970 <laughs> sticking my head through the fence. We lived on a farm up in the mountains of Vermont. So, yeah. There's, oh, there's me with my little brother, Travis. <laughs> 1970. That's when you're right, right when you got brought, brought home. But the whole reason we're doing this, oh, here's where I got... I had pneumonia. They did a whole newspaper article, and they, they did this gingerbread house. Oh. I had pneumonia, so I was in the hospital. But look what's behind me, Bambi. <laughs> Bambi. Yeah, who'd have known? <laughs> who'd have known? Back then. So I know I've got. Here I was dressed up as Halloween, as some <laughs> Japanese uh, character. I can't remember. My brother was Casper. This, uh, luckily, these photos uh, got saved from our fire. 
right here. I'm about to find him. There we are. So I gotta zoom in. <laughs> it's already. It's, oh God, those masks. Oh, I gotta pull out. I guess I can't focus that tight. But if you look right here <laughs> and right there, that's my brother and I as Planet of the Apes. <laughs> those masks are creepy. <laughs> Yeah, we were creepy back then. <laughs> Look at that. This is this is what it used to be like for, uh, for Halloween, back in the early seventies. And that's oh, this is my mother right here, dressed up as a witch. Nice. There's little Travis, with his little mask on. <laughs> my mother with her hair all teased out. But yeah, that's Halloween back then. Let me get through oh, that. That's creepy. <laughs> uh. <laughs> YouTube question. Do you know anyone that worked on Treasure Planet? Yeah, I know a lot of people that worked on Treasure Planet. Many, many. <laughs> Dustin should narrate your paintings as you paint in Sean's voice. Oh, Sean Connery? Sean Connery. <laughs> He's going to build some trees now. <laughs> <laughs> some nice, friendly trees pretty good <laughs> Aaron when you're animating do you do key frames and then um, fill in in betweens or do you draw each one in order uh, it depends on the type of animation if it's fast animation where it's really broad action oriented then I'll do straight ahead which is basically every drawing. Um, then if it's slow acting animation where I gotta figure out poses that, that I work within, then yes, I'll work pose to pose, get the poses done first, then work out the breakdowns and then the in-betweens. Do you have an all-time favorite movie or animated movie? I've got a lot of favorite movies. Um, uh, you know, my I've got a lot of favorite animated movies, Bambi being number one, yeah. Iron Giant. Um, yeah. Let me look at my reference real quick, sorry. Um, Pinocchio and, and uh, you know, there's there's a ton in there. Um, I love, you know, uh, Apocalypse Now for live action. Um, Apocalypse Now. Uh, Saving Private Ryan? Yeah, yeah. Napoleon Dynamite. <laughs> we went <laughs> the to Big Lebowski. Uh, oh, brother, where art thou? Any of boys, Smithies. Yeah, the Coen Brothers are my favorite director, producer, or directing team. Uh, I just think they're amazing. Yeah, my all-time favorite has been um, Saving Private Ryan. Yeah, always been fascinated with World War II history, and they. They hit it pretty pretty close to home on that one. Um, as far as animated, I always go to Brother Bear on that one. Uh, I just love the music in that, and also the moose. Well, thank you for your support. How's it going, Bear? Was the Iron Giant all hand-drawn animation? No, the giant, the Iron Giant was uh, CG. Well, Iron Giant was a mix of 2D and CG. Yeah, no, I'm saying the, the giant, the character. Oh, yeah, the giant, yeah. Uh, how about uh, Prince of Egypt? I like it okay. I definitely like the animation of that. Yeah. It's, I think the animation is beautiful. I'm just not, yeah. you know, it's a, it's... It's a Moses story. I get it. Yeah, there's another movie lot. that I liked watching for. Uh, I really like Brenda had... Chapman. Brenda Chapman. I'm sorry, I just cut you off. Oh, no. uh, I'm a big fan of Brenda Chapman. It's huge. Yeah, there's a um, movie. I'm. It's in the same. It's, it's in that similar style of animation. It's uh, Sinbad. Oh yeah, that was and, DreamWorks. Yeah, and I really love the way that um. Uh, the animated the goddess with the way that her hair flowed. Yeah. I always thought that was really cool. It was almost like an underwater kind of uh, animation with her. 
Have you saved yet? <laughs> yeah, the best shave your work. Have you ever followed a Bob Ross tutorial? No. I never have. I've watched them. But you never there. like followed with along with them? No. Have you tried stop motion animation? You know what I never did? We used to do some funny little, you know, with our bodies, you know, uh, bits of animation, uh, which is kind of stop motion, but never anything with a puppet. Ooh, there's also Road to El Dorado, someone mentioned. I love that one, too. The one Oh, the, that's the one. Is that is that the one from DreamWorks? That's the one from DreamWorks, uh, Road to El Dorado, the two guys oh, finding El Dorado. Yeah, because that one, I think, is DreamWorks. One of them is Warner Brothers. The one that you were talking about? Uh, Sinbad? Yeah, Sinbad. Sinbad might be... Or maybe they both are. I thought Sinbad was Warner Brothers, or one of them was Warner Brothers. Maybe I'm wrong. I can't remember now. Sinbad, DreamWorks. Yep, Sinbad is DreamWorks. And oh, it is? Yep. And El... Maybe on the road. Maybe, well, I think one of them is Warner Brothers, I thought. Uh, oh, DreamWorks. Oh, okay. They both are. Yeah, because they pretty much match in the same animation style. Yeah. No, it might be... Except with, with moves like Anastasia and Titan AE. Those are, uh, yeah. Those are Warner Brothers. No? Are they? No, Anastasia was... Or Titan oh, AE Fox. Fox. Fox, my mistake. I think we were Warner Brothers. And Anastasia, wasn't Anastasia uh, Don Bluth? Yeah, Don Bluth and... So was Titan AE. Oh, yeah, yeah, but they were... Uh, because yeah, he had to deal with Fox. Okay. I forgot about that. I'm trying to remember what movie, what anime movies came from Warner Bros. I don't know. Well, so was it? it uh, oh, sorry. That's all right. Um, um, oh, Camelot. Oh yeah, Camelot. Um, Space Jam. Well, well um, technically that's live action. Well, yeah. Iron Giant was Warner Brothers. Oh, that's right. But they didn't. They they, they didn't publicize it. They didn't. They didn't push it as well. So when it came out, it didn't do very well. Uh, Anastasia was originally Don Bluth, but bought by Warner. That's what it was. Yeah, Iron Giants, Warner Brothers, yeah. Uh, Nightmare Before <coughs> Nightmare Before Christmas or Corpse Bride? Those those two are Warner Brothers. No, no, Nightmare Before Christmas is Disney. Oh. Uh, what type of paper was used when traditionally animating with pencil? Um, it's a specially made paper. It's got a little bit heavier weight to it. Um, I've got some right here. Got a Nala drawing on it. Huh. But this is it here, so it's pegged down at the bottom to go on the pegs. And uh, and it just it handles it's a little heavier, you know, it's not like um it's not the same weight as like a copy paper, it's a little heavier. And uh, and this is sixteen field paper, so you can see it's a bit bigger, so we could get some fairly decent detail in our shots. So this is uh, this is this is what the paper was. That was what it looked like. Are you familiar with the Elf Quest comics by Wendy Penny? I am not. Larry on YouTube says, Aaron, you have a standing invitation from me to visit our zoo in Knoxville. Thanks again. Because of your advice, I'm drawing almost every day again. That's fantastic. Did you watch Igor stop animation? Um, Igor? Igor. <laughs> Igor, Igor. 
<laughs> Hilarious movie. Love the humor and uh, I think you would love it. Igor. 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 Dr. Frank. Was that a question? Now, have you seen that movie? The stop the stop animation. Oh no, I never did. Igor. No. So, Nick and I are very excited. We, um... What are you excited about? Well, we finished paying off our... Our uh, safari cost to uh, Kenya. And we just bought our airline tickets today. Ooh. So, we are all set to hit... Head off to Kenya in October. It's real... So we're going to have some nice live streams after that. We're going to have some really cool imagery to share with you guys. And Dustin, you'll be going on one. Vedanta is going to be going soon. So I want to start, I'd like to start hitting Africa every year, if not every other year. That would be awesome. My favorite place in the world. Absolutely my favorite place in the world. Yeah, well, I would love to go there for my birthday next year. How's it feel to want? It feels good. <laughs> feels very good. Uh, you think you'll ever learn 3D in the future? Um, never say never, but right now I have no plans on it. Right now, no. I don't plan on it. Any new questions for me? Nope. Nope. We're getting down to the down to the bottom there? Yep. So I'm just trying to get this padding my feet drawn in nicely. Nicely. Nice and smoothly. Easy does it now. Give us a little more Sean Sean Connery. Huh? Give us some more Sean Connery. Alright, I'll ask I'll try to ask it with a question. <laughs> what artist do you study to learn cross cross hatching? Uh Heinrich Clay. Heinrich Clay is my favorite. And there's another was it Gibson? Was it Gibson that was another ink artist? I have no idea. I, I liked Charles Charles Gibson. Let me look that up real quick. Or you look it up. Look up Charles Gibson, Dustin. Charles Gibson, an ink artist. Cause I had a lot of his work. I want to make sure I'm saying it right. If it was, if that, was, that was it. I'm pretty sure it was. Charles Gibson. Anastasia is uh, Anastasia is Fox too. Yes, it was all. It was all uh, Bluth. Oh, Charles Gibson is a um, anchor and journalist. Yes. Did you did you pull it up? No, 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 no. Char not Charles Gibson, the the journalist. Did you put in ink? I said put in ink drawing. Come on, man, listen to me. There you go, Charles Gibson. Yeah, so Charles Gibson's another one to look at. The ink artist, not the journalist. Why are there two of them? Oh, really? Oh, like they, these drawings. Aren't they great? Yeah. I told you. Charles Dana Gibson. As you can see, folks, my patience level isn't very good. <laughs> Dustin has to deal with me being impatient a lot. And that's the fun. That's the fun part of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Dustin, what's a good camera for starting photography? Um, I've known can uh, mainly Canon and Sony 
And so I'd say for Canon, a good start would be like a T6i or a T7 Rebel. Um, and for Sony would be like the early 6000s, like the 6000 or the 6300 A-series would be good starting cameras. As far as the other brands go, like Nikon or Panasonic, I have no idea. So here, I'm just going to erase some of those extra lines out of there. So you can see I just want to show you some of the fur texture that I'm trying to get and some of the cross, the hatching. There's a video of a rhino chase going viral. <laughs> you do a live stream while being chased, you can call it learning to animate and life study on the run. That's right. <laughs> Look right there, that's a rhino. Right down to the toes. May I ask, I saw your character designs for Jungle Book. They didn't continue with them. Which projects have your characters most recently been involved in? Um, geez, I guess the, the last time, because I've done, I've done a lot of designs for characters where the film never made it. So I guess the last one was the Bear and the Hair commercial, I think. I mean, I've done, I've done stuff for other movie companies, but it wasn't design work. But um, as far as design work goes, as far as character design, the last one was the Bear and the Hair commercial. But by John Lewis. Were you ever interested in writing a novel? You know what? I've, I've thought about... I've, I've always been interested in writing. Whether or not I write a novel, um, I don't know. I like writing scripts. I like being involved in writing scripts. I wouldn't say that I sit down and write scripts, but um, I like working with writers. Um, I like the story process a lot. And uh, and there's something about you know there's a there's a definitely an attraction of writing a novel. How much would you charge for drawing a golden retriever, um, if you would do such a thing? Um, One million dollars. <laughs> my mom just lost her beloved dog and would love to give her a drawing as a present uh, when she turns 60 here in October. Uh, actually, I'm not doing any... Uh, I'm sorry for your mom losing their dog. That's terrible. Uh, but we, I don't, have, I don't have the ability, the time to do it right now just because of some of our other... Our other commitments, our other responsibilities. Uh, do you have a go-to animal to draw? Uh, for me, it's bears. Thanks for thanks for uh, for your videos. Yeah, bears, bears, lions, big tigers, and bears. Yeah. Oh my! Oh my! Oh my! Uh, what inspired Snow Bear? Um, I was pretty lonely at the time. I was living alone. Uh, and I was just kind of digging deep into my own psyche, and that's what inspired it. You know, to, you know, I think I'm a big believer, even on a short, short cartoon, write about your own experiences, write about what what's real for you, and it comes and it'll come out much more charming, or or you know, I mean charming, or, or appealing. You know, on the when it when you complete it, it'll feel more real, tangible, because it's something that's true to you it's, it, it comes home what is your thought of blind drawing for warm ups ah meh meh I don't I, I think that's a I don't think you need to do that I think you need to draw blind drawing eh. blind kind to cont if, if you have a hard time seeing if you're drawing from life then yeah do some blind contours if that's the kind of drawing you're talking about I'm assuming you are.
Can you believe Bindi Irwin is 21 now? She's engaged too. Her dad would be so proud. She's 21? Yeah. So I'm just getting, just trying to get that rough contour. And then I work that some of that roughness right into the shape that I'm creating. Hey, Gabby just arrived. It's Gabby! Right. Hey guys, I'm a bit late. Debbie. Huh? Debbie, is this a Debbie we know? No, Gabby. Oh, Gabby. Gabby. I thought you said Debbie. Hey, Gabster. <laughs> Gab How are Gabster. you? So we're just looking around here. Uh, do you revisit the basics sometimes when drawing? Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. It's always good to kind of go back and refresh. Refresh that memory of yours. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, okay. I understand. Okay. Yeah. So I'm just kind of pushing some of these darks, getting them a little richer. What would be your ideal pre-drawing warm-up exercise uh, for figure drawing and for how long? Gestures. You know, do sit down and do gestures for 20 minutes. You know, one minute, two minute gestures. Some people do 30 seconds. I think it's too short. It doesn't. What time did you wake up? Um, what is this thing you speak of called waking up? I don't understand that, that question. <laughs> How long has it been since the last time you met the actors from Brother Bear? Uh, the Brother Bear premiere. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, uh, Dave Thomas, who was the voice of one of the moose, he was doing... Oh, shoot, I didn't realize it wasn't even on screen. He was, uh, after Brother Bear, he was doing another project with us. or Not with us, but at the studio. And um, so he would come in and occasionally we'd get together and talk. Uh, what time is it at your place? It's 2047 here in, Aus in uh, Austria. So in that's 847, I think? Is that 847? I believe so. For us, it is 248 p.m., in which, in that type of hour, is 14. 1440, 1448. So I've got the tail in. The tail feels pretty good. Now I just want to put the markings in of the tail. 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 <laughs> You're just coming. I just got back from this kick-ass brec uh, breakfast cupcake shop in Santa Cruz. I had a fluffy chocolate with <laughs> hazelnut buttercream topping. That's got to be Gabby. <laughs> That's Gabby. Thanks. Now I want to go eat. <laughs> you and me both. Get Dustin, nice Dustin got a really got a couple of really good shots of you, Gabby. Did you send them to her? Uh, I sent a few of them. Yeah. Um, well, Actually, we got a whole bunch. We uh, that's the other thing we should tell everybody. Yeah. Dustin just got done editing all the photos from the class. Finally. So for those of you that are listening from our painting class in England, uh, you're going to be getting links to uh, the photos. And Gabby's wondering, what was the inspiration for this sketch? Was it chosen at random? No, somebody asked about it, uh, doing a snow bear, or snow bear, snow, snow leopard. <laughs> so that's what I'm drawing. Snow leopard. A snow leopard. <laughs> Aaron, are you rich and famous? I'm rich in life, baby. Rich in life. And famous to my kids. Oh, you know what happened? I walked, I went to a Mexican restaurant the other day, and some guy at the restaurant recognized me from the live streams. Nice. Yeah, it was kind of, kind of funny. Yeah, yeah, kind of, kind of cool.
when will you do the director's commentary for Brother Bear? I think you talked about that a few weeks ago. Uh, Nick, Nick and I have to do it. We gotta, we gotta figure out when we'll do that. Sorry, I'm trying to. I got a lot of line work, dark, dark lines to do here. <laughs> yeah, I look really weird in the pics. For sure, not photogenic. Who said that? Gabby. Oh come on! <laughs> she that's I hate that when when people are photogenic and they know they're photogenic and they have to play the no I'm not that's what Gabby just did. She's asking how Marshall's doing. Marshall's great. Marshall's back up in Vermont right now. We just brought him to the airport the other day. The other day. Send our pals up to the airport, dear D. Oh, and he said to say hi, actually. He said the next time we saw Gabby on the live stream, he said to say hi. What is your all-time favorite animated film and why? Iron Giant. Great story. Great characters. Bambi. Great environment. Honesty. Really amazing uh, uh, research. And that research led to amazing... Uh, believable animation. Aaron, can you maybe do a tribute to Richard Williams? Well, uh, we should do something like that. Look on the floor. Is that Roger Rabbit drawing on the floor over over by the copy machine? Is it not? No. no. What happened to that drawing? Is it in the is it in the pile of drawings? I don't think so. No. No. Not there. It's not there. We just it's so funny. We just had it. Is it did you already check over there? Yeah, no, I looked over there. So there's the tail. The tail is done now. So there's our our snow leopard. The leopard in the snow. The snow in the leopard. Leopardy boppity boopy. Leopardy boppity boopy. And see, I order these by these jelly rolls. I order these by the box because I'm running out on my other one. So then when I run out, I just grab a new one and bippity boppity boopy. What's your favorite movie that you personally worked on? Um, that's a good question. Bippity boppity boopy. Bippity boppy. <laughs> um, I would say, well, obviously, every movie has its own merit. Brother Bear, I, r I really learned a lot. I don't think it's the best movie I've ever worked on, but having directed it, it I learned a tremendous amount in story construction uh, and that really you know I really enjoyed that Lion King I just absolutely loved working on that movie how about you do a caricature of Dustin in a live stream ooh that could be cool Just getting a little bit of white in here. On these live Those streams. Little touches. Hmm? Oh, wow. Uh, I've got a big question up there. Oh, boy. Uh, actually, can we move? Can you move the. Um, is it, can you move the, uh, the reference? Am I there? No, yeah, you're there. Just grab it and bring it over to you. Twitch question. Brother Bear and Baloo from the Jungle Book uh, having lunch. Oh, that's a good one. Uh, do you know Greg uh, Gregory Manchester? No. I'd like to meet him, though. We're friends on Facebook. And I want to own one of his paintings. If so, what do you think of his oil painting style? I love it. I'm absolutely in love with his work. Real quickly, do you still need this reference? 
No, I'm pretty good. Okay. I'm good. Okay, here's a long one. Question. Aaron, you are a huge inspiration to me. I am especially inspired by your openness in your videos about the struggles you have faced. I was wondering if you have any advice on facing life's challenges. My father, who taught me how to draw and paint, went completely blind last year. And ever since then, I've struggled to get back into drawing. How do you find the motivation to, can you, to continue pursuing art in the midst of your trials? Well, to be honest, there's going to be times when you don't, when it, though that desire does leave you. And you have to be just, it's okay, you know. Uh, but at some point, um, you just have to, you have to brush yourself off. Life is meant for the living. And for those of us that are left behind, um, you know, we got to realize that the people that have left us or the people that are suffering would want us to, would not want us to, to kind of grovel in self-pity. And um, that was a big, you know, realization for me when, uh, after Karen passed away. And so, but there's, you know, the, the biggest thing that I was going through was the guilt of living you know, have after someone you love so much passes away. It's a really tough thing to figure out. And, uh, but eventually you do. And, you know, it's, you know, that pain kind of scars over. It never goes away. But you, uh, you learn to live with it. And, um, uh, and whether it's something where, you know, my father is going blind as well, Marshall. And, uh, and his whole life is driven by his, well, as, as with most of us many of us, um, is driven by his ability to see, whether it's his, uh, his drawing, because he draws, or his construction work, he builds things, um, he's going to lose that ability. And so it's coming to terms with that. And then you have to find, okay, well, what am I going to do otherwise? How, am I, how do I express myself in other ways that, that are going to you know, satisfy me and, and give me that, that drive to keep moving forward? And it's not always easy to figure that out. And you just have to be patient and know that the sun, you know, is just going to come up every day. And eventually you'll find your way. It's a cycle, you know, and, and you gotta, you got to live through that, that cycle, the daily cycle, the daily cycle of life. And, um, and it's, you know, you focus on the first day and you focus on the next day and then you focus on the next day and it's, you focus on one day at a time. Next thing you know, a month has gone by. Next thing you know, a year has gone by. Next thing you know, a decade has gone by. And it's crazy how life um, works in that way. So, yeah, you just have to uh, focus on the good. And focus on putting good back. That was a big one for me, wanting to, you know, just wanted to, I wanted to be good. Once, when you start losing people in your life, you realize, you know, when they're gone, they're gone, and um, and you want to. It change. It made me. It made me look at the world in a different way. You know, I wanted. I wanted to know. I wanted to leave it a better place than what I came into. And uh, so that's you know that's our inspiration here, doing what we're doing here, is we wanted. To, I wanted to do something good. I wanted to do something that Karen would be proud of. And so that, that was the inspiration behind starting all of this. And so here we are. And then we have, now we have a snow leopard. What's the longest period of time you've gone without drawing? Mm, that's a good question. Maybe a couple of weeks, a couple of months? I was, I was expecting like 30 minutes. <laughs> couple of weeks or a couple of months. After Karen passed away, I didn't draw for a long time. All right, what, I think we're pretty much there. What has being an artist taught you about yourself? Wow, that's a good one. Uh, you know, it's, it's learning how to express, learning how to be honest, learning how to continue to try to learn to persevere to push through to um, you know set goals all of that art has done for me
Well, there we go. Is there any chance of Ronnie joining you on one of these streams? Absolutely. It's funny you say that because I was thinking about that the other day. I thought it would be fun to get Ronnie in. And uh, we can either do some talking or drawing. I think we did. We had Ronnie when we were doing the uh, possum drawing. We had Ronnie and Travis. Remember that? Yeah, I remember that. That was at least what? A year and a half, two year and a half ago? Two yeah. years ago? Yeah. Yes. Well, the answer to that is yes. We'll get Ronnie in. So. So there we go. There's my snow leopard. Just in time for some idiot outside to start rubbing their car. <laughs> the leopard of snow. There we go. All right, you guys. Well, uh, I had a blast. Remember, we've got. Um, okay, we got a. I got a list to go down. So we've got. Remember, we've got our back to school sale happening, and that's our. Uh, uh, for if you're a student or a teacher, you'll get 50% off of our streaming and our membership. So that's a big deal. So go check that out. That's going to be going until September 1st. Um, also, these drawings, everything I'm doing here, these are all being done for our uh, Lightbox showing. We're going to be at Lightbox Expo September 6th through the 8th. That's in Pasadena, California. Look it up. It's Lightbo, uh, lightboxexpo.com, right? Lightbo? Uh, no, not Lightbo. <laughs> not Lightbo. Lightboxexpo.com. <laughs> So go check that out. Uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. And if you can make it, it's in Pasadena, California. We're going to have all of these drawings for sale. We'll have prints for sale. I'm going to be doing lectures. A lot of my buddies that are going to be going are going to be giving lectures. There's going to be a lot of great information to be had there. So go and do that. Also, um, uh, our... Uh, what's that? Patreon. Patreon, yeah. Our Patreon uh, 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 channel is a uh, Patreon page, I guess, yeah. is happening. And um, we'd love for you to go check it out. And remember, for really minimum uh, donations, you can get some really great stuff in return. A dollar gets you four images a month. The five bu bu uh, bucks gets you four Photoshop files every month of my work. And then $10 a month will get you a free, uh, not free, a live stream each month as well, where we're going to be a much smaller group, so I'll be able to answer everyone's questions, and we might even be able to do some portfolio reviews. So I'm really excited about that. So go over to patreon.com backslash Aaron Blaze Art, and you can uh, you can help us out there. And you know the donations really help us to continue to create content for you guys. So uh, we really appreciate the help. And then lastly, um, September 28th, um, we've got my character design masterclass happening online you can go to creature art teacher to check it out i believe it's creatureartteacher.com backslash live i think that's right anyway go go to our website creatureartteacher.com and um uh we'll be talking about for six hours i'll be covering character design it's going to be a lot of the same stuff that's in my course but we're going to be doing it live and i'm going to be adding some additional material to it so I'm going to take you through all the fundamentals that I've talked about in my course uh, and demonstrate them on the fundamental you know, the, the, of character design. But then we're also going to take a character from uh, a novel or from a uh, story and we're going to design it right there on the spot and, uh, and we'll go through the process. Uh, so that'll be a lot of fun. So once again, that's September 28th. It's going to be 11 a.m. starting time. Eastern Standard Time. So that's when it's going to be live. It'll be live. And for those of you that do purchase a ticket and tune in, you will be able to have the uh, the actual stream. You can download it. So if you miss it for whatever reason, or if you come in late, or you just want to rewatch it, you'll be able to have that for all time. So that's our gift to you. So anyway, I want to thank you guys for today and uh, hanging out with us while we draw, while I drew, while I drawed pictures. There's one. There's our snow leopard, and then there's our ice skating elefante. 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 Uh, so go out and put some beauty back in the world. We're going to see you back here on Thursday. So between now and Thursday, try some pen drawing and try being nice to somebody and make their life better. That's what we all should be doing right now. And, uh, and I will catch you in, on Thursday. Same time, same bat channel, same bat station. 
We'll see you here. Dustin, take it away. Thank you guys once again so so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream and hope you guys enjoy our future streams as well, which will be in Thursday. And so until next time on Thursday, Cowboy Bebop. See you guys. <laughs>